Bullies beware. The Protection from Harassment Act is here. The law came into effect on Saturday. It's designed to offer immediate protection to people who are harassed, bullied or stalked. But here's the question. Can it be abused? Let's speak to lawyer Kathleen Rice. Kathleen, uh, morning to you. Thanks very much for coming in this morning. Sir, can it be abused? Is this open to abuse? It's quite broad, it seems, from what I've read. It is broad, but there are, um, and there is the possibility of abuse, but there are a number of safeguards in the Act itself which could prevent its abuse. And the procedure that's followed in the Act is very similar to um, domestic violence protection orders, which the Magistrates Court have been administering and issuing for many years. And um, the same safeguards contained in the Domestic Violence um, Act are also contained in the um, Protection from Harassment Act. Um, in particular, um, the Act is very specific that any person who makes a false statement in alleging that they are being harassed, um, that person will be guilty of a criminal offence and they may be fined or imprisoned for five years. Um, in addition, the magistrate may call for additional evidence, may call for witnesses um, before he issues an interim order. Um, also, there's a process that first an interim order is granted, which is then served on the alleged perpetrator. The perpetrator is then given the opportunity to come back to court and say, this is a load of nonsense. Well, this was always a concern, up. wasn't it? Because uh, it does talk about bullying, which has been a big issue in schools, that you have someone at school of school-going age not quite understanding the ramifications and the implications of accusing someone of bullying or stalking, then going crying wolf, for example, and getting someone else into trouble. But that can't happen, it seems, in this particular act. Well, hopefully the um, magistrates who are going to issue the orders um, will have um, sufficient training and experience from the domestic violence situation to be able to deal with children, because children can come to court on their own without a guardian or a parent. So they need to know how to deal with the children. In addition, there's some very no-nonsense directives which the minister has issued um, saying to the clerks of the court, this is how it must be administered. You must be knowledgeable of the Act and there, um, if the clerks of the court are not knowledgeable or misapply the Act, um, that is amounting to a um, well, I suppose close to a dismissible offence. I suppose that it's also open to a personal imp uh, interpretation of what you deem to be harassment. You and I might see harassment as slightly different. Is there almost, and I, I'm not going to use a legal term, I don't have it, an entry level, a, a severity of harassment that it will look at, or will it look at all forms of harassment regardless of the, the perception of it? Well, that's, that's the one strange thing about this Act and where it's different from the Domestic Violence um, Act is that it's the effect that the behaviour has on the complainant. So if the complainant fears that they're going to be harmed or that harm is imminent, that is sufficient to approach the court. But then the magistrate, again, in assessing whether or not um, an order must be issued, will look at whether the feelings of the complainant are reasonable in the circumstances and whether there's sufficient evidence to issue the interim order. Well, it's one thing to have a law, it's quite something else to implement and, and look after it. Kath uh, Kathleen, uh, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, uh, Kathleen Rice uh, from Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer talking to me this morning about uh, what is now known as the Protection from Harassment Act. It's quarter past eight. News that moves. ENCA.com.